Hey, we're gonna take a look at the Harbor Freight Hercules. This is an eight millimeter gear-driven orbital polisher. And by gear-driven, that means it's gonna gear drive or force drive it to rotate a pad and also oscillate the pad with an eight millimeter orbit stroke length. So first of all, let's just go ahead and unbox this thing and take a look at what you get. Okay, so since this thing came out, and it hasn't been too long, I've been getting a lot of questions. People ask me, what do I think of this tool? Well, I hadn't used this, so I didn't have a valid opinion. So we're gonna fix that today. Behind me is a 1959 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud. And as you can see, this thing is big. It just came out of a recent restoration, but it still has a lot of swirls and actually some sanding marks in it that I'm gonna try to get removed. So let's see, here we go, here's the tool. And a 25 foot rubber cord, that's a nice feature. And uh, when just looking at this, compared to the Flex 3401, it has the same type of bell handle. It has a um, spindle lock in the middle up here, kind of out of the way so you don't accidentally push it down. It has these soft rubber tool rests. Now what this is nice for, not that you should be doing this, but say you wanted to set this down, it's not gonna scar the paint like steel or metal tool rests would do. It has a variable speed dial, goes from one to six. It has a soft, st soft start trigger down here. Trigger lock is in the same place on the flex. Pull the trigger in, push the button in, you lock it so you don't gotta hold it the whole time you're buffing. Uh, has a six inch backing plate on it. And one of the things I always show people when they buy a brand new flex, even though it is stated that you don't need to do that, here's the uh, owner's manual. Okay, it looks like this is kind of nice. So it comes with a, a, um, the correct size hex head wrench, and it looks like it comes with a couple of uh, screw heads here. Offhand, I'm not sure where they would go. I guess if you took the handle off, this would be, these would uh, be there to hold on the front over mold, the front over case there. Come out of there. My gosh, okay, two little screws there. Okay, so here's Allen wrench. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off. And that wasn't too tight. I might even, you know, you're gonna take this off anyway, but make sure you snug that down. First thing I notice, you know, is the, the bolt in the washer that holds the backing plate on, it's kind of substandard compared to the Flex. The Flex has a heavy duty bolt and a heavy duty thick washer that fills up the entire area where this plate attaches to the spindle. This is kind of undersized and I would be worried if you were to push on this really hard, you might actually break it. Might be worth the investment to copy the Flex washer instead of this undersized washer that it comes with. Anyway, here you can see the gears and there's already some grease on them. And then there's some grease on this little piece of um, flat plastic that encircles the gears. And that to me is a good sign uh, because what happens is when you're pushing on this really hard, you'll actually flex this plate and you'll push this portion of the plastic into this housing. And what'll happen is you're buffing, you'll see little shards of plastic flying out. And all you guys that have used the 3401 as many years as I have and pushed on it hard for doing heavy paint correction, you've seen that phenomena, that characteristic. So inside here, what they do is they put a felt ring and because um, Harbor Freight took and already put some grease on there, there is some grease around here, but here's what I show people. Get yourself, this is just some uh, central pneumatic uh, air tool oil. And before you start using this thing, just go ahead and put a little tool oil all the way around that felt ring. And then periodically remove the backing plate and re-oil the felt ring. Uh, you're gonna thank me later on if you use this the way I do, and that's just to do heavy paint correction. Anyway, so there's how you do that. And by the way, down the road, you can actually take, I take like a, a tack, a thumb tack, or anything sharp, a needle, and you can pry this felt ring out and flip it over, because it is a wear item. I'm not sure if they offer a replacement, but just keep that in mind. You know, nothing lasts forever, not even you and I. The backing plate is gonna wear out, the Velcro, the hook side is gonna wear out, and that felt ring's gonna wear out too. Now, when you go to put this thing back on, there's a slot in the backing plate and there's a slot in the, there's a slotted spindle. You wanna make sure you get that completely lined up and that it falls down and fits on there flush before you tighten this uh, bolt back down. And it's important because you don't want the gears to ever have any slop in there. You want a nice tight factory fit. So we'll go ahead and tighten that back on. We've lubed the felt ring. And then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna push the 
spindle lock in as I turn this, and that'll lock up the gear set. There, you heard it click in place. Now I can tighten that down nice and tight. And that's just to keep the thing um, together nice and tight, no, no sloppy gear lash there. Because in a normal use, this is gonna see hours and hours of buffing. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You got the owner's manual, you got the hex head wrench, couple of screws, and I think that's if you take this handle off. And sometimes, you know, that's kind of nice. You know, if you're buffing around a rear view mirror, the handle gets in the way. So you pull the handle off and all of a sudden you can get that pad right up underneath the mirror. So sometimes there's actually a use for pulling the handle off to get into tight areas. Um, the weight feels about the same, maybe a little bit lighter. Uh, has a nice ergonomic grips. Uh, feels kind of good. The plastic's just hard. The handle here is just hard plastic. But back here, this, uh, this rubber grip here, it feels pretty good. Anyway, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give this a test out, test drive on this really cool 1959 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud. And again, this thing just came from a, a complete paint shop restoration. It does have a lot of swirls. Actually has some DA sanding marks, got some tracers in it. So I'll probably take a wool pad to this first, then come back and clean up the holograms using the Hercules. By the way, I did literally <laughs> write the book on eight millimeter gear driven tools. So if you've been wondering which tool to buy, stay tuned and I'll give you my opinion at the end of my review and after I get done buffing out this really cool 1959 Rolls Royce Silver Cloud. So after about 20 hours of doing nothing but machine polishing, this 1959 Rolls Royce Silver Cloud, 10 hours of that was with the wool pad on the rotary, but all the polishing work I did with the Hercules Force Rotation Dual Action Polisher. And I have to say, on sale at $100, and with the three year warranty, which is like another 30 bucks, this thing is a player in the industry. It, it works just as well as all the other eight millimeter gear driven orbital polishers on the market. It might even be a, a pound lighter. Now I tested this out using a variety of different pads. I tested it out using a microfiber pad for doing extreme paint correction. And it operated smooth and flawlessly, just as expected and just as hoped for. Next I tested it with the foam cutting pad and same thing. Uh, it's easy to handle, the soft start trigger works really well, spread the product out, started buffing, no complaints. Then I tested it with a foam polishing pad, and same thing, it just seemed to work just fine. It, it perfected the paint to the point that I was happy with it. And then just for fun, I went ahead and tested it with a foam finishing pad. So these are the primary pads you would always use with a tool like this. Microfiber, foam cutting, foam polishing, foam finishing, left a flawless finish. Uh, the, the 25 foot long cord is kind of handy. Uh, this is a long car. I was able to plug in either side of the car and have plenty of cord to use it. Um, I didn't notice that it was any noisier than any other tool that I use. Uh, there was never any miss in the motor operation. Uh, seemed to work just fine. So, you know, if you're looking for an entry level gear driven orbital polisher, this is pretty hard to beat. And if you'd like to read my full review, you can find that on the Dr. Beasley's blog at drbeasleys.com.